Hello and welcome or welcome back to Rebecca. You are here today for a momentous occasion. The final wrap up of the booktube prize. I have read in three rounds of this community judged prize. Um, I will link the details down below if you don't know what the booktube prize is, but presumably you're here because you know or you've followed me from the previous rounds. And so over the course of this, this is this final round is six books and every round has been judged as six books and half of them are tossed and the other half go forward. And I've read a total of 15 books over the course of this prize. So I kind of just want to give general thoughts on my experience with, with that. And I think it's been overall a very good experience. Not every book was like an awesome book that I loved reading. There were several that I would have DNF'd, including in this round. Um, but I overall had a great experience with the diversity of the reading. The lengths of these books are completely varied. <laughs> Even in this round, we have actual tomes and we have tiny slim novella. Yeah, so the, the lengths, the style, every single one had a different way of providing perspective. I didn't get along with all of the perspectives either. Uh, we have generational sagas, very grounded history. We have speculative elements and magical realism. So it's really widely represented what types of writing are out there. And I think each of these books also gave me something to investigate more. Um, I was not overly familiar with the cultural histories that were being presented in most of these books. Almost every book that I read had, had some element that was touched on with cultural history. And so each of those didn't necessarily um, do a deep dive into that, but they touched on something that made me, that sparked me wanting to look into something more. And so overall, that was a wonderful experience to, to feel that, that spark and interest in learning more about these cultures that I read about. So I think that was the big win of participating in this project. So interestingly, of my 15 books that I read, I think only one that made it to the final would be in my top five and at the bottom. <laughs> um, so that's interesting and I'll give you my, my top five at the end, I think, once I'm done going through this. So in previous rounds, I have given like a, a summary of everything in random order and then given my ranking. But I think we're here, you want the rankings, so we're just gonna get to the rankings here. Now, I do have individual book reviews for all of these, so I'm gonna keep it pretty abbreviated here as much as I can, because you just wanna get the rankings, I think. Um, and then we'll get individual reviews over the course of the next month or so as they're edited and ready to go up. So in last place, this was an unfortunate one for me, Brickmakers by Selva Almada. I had a tough time with this. This would have been a DNF for me. It has some very graphic cruelty and animal violence that I, I didn't feel was really warranted or valuable to the story. And I had pretty major problems just with the conceit of this book, um, as well as the perspective. So I think really wrong choices were made about presenting this story. And I think that's a problem in all three of my bottom three books, is that specifically the perspective choice and choices about presentation of the book really didn't work for me. So in this one, we are in Argentina and we have sort of a reimagining of a Romeo and Juliet story, but gay. Um, however, that's not our perspective. And I think that is the main problem for me. We start from the perspective of these two patriarchs of, of families and they are both brickmakers and neighbors and they start a feud with each other over decades. And so we watch their children grow up and that feud poison the relationships between their children. And it's just, as I said, contains a lot of graphic violence. I struggled with the women characters in the book. They seem not very sympathetic um, to the reader or fully fleshed out. They are basically just there as bodies to be fondled or to be sympathetic to their husbands, basically, um, in the cases of the wives they have no other characterization. And so I thought that was not ideal. And then even further on, it feels like a, a trauma gay book where everything is, is happening to, to damage the, the gay children in this family. And we end, or we, we begin at the ending with the gay son of one family and the eldest straight son of another family dying on the ground at a 
carnival. And so we're flashing back to see everything that led to that in this feud. And yeah, it just felt like we never got an interior perspective from um, the, the characters that were really most hard hit by this. Uh, so it just felt very, very unnecessary and kind of gross to me in how it was, it was laid out. So I just didn't get along with this. I really wanted that perspective to center the lens of the gay characters. And it, it's not that book, unfortunately for me. In fifth place, I have another one with perspective problems, and that is Disquiet by Zulfu Livinelli. Uh, this is set on the Turkey-Syria border surrounding um, ISIS attacks on the Yazidi um, religious minority. And I struggled with the perspective because we are coming from a Muslim perspective who is kind of outside of everything that is happening. Um, he, his character is a journalist who has heard about the death of his friend in a hate crime. And so he kind of is returning home to this, this town on the border of Turkey and Syria um, where this conflict has kind of happened. And when he gets there, he hears this story about his friend really making drastic changes in his life, becoming involved with a refugee woman who is of this oppressed Yazidi minority group. So he's not really connected to anything that's happening directly. And that was a misstep for me. I absolutely wish that we had had his friend who died in perspective or this Yazidi woman. Um, her perspective, I think, would have been the most impactful and important. And instead, he's kind of going around interviewing people and trying to find out secondhand information about these other two characters who, who had really major horrible things happen to them. And so that, that has a distancing effect in terms of horrific things that have occurred in the course of the story um, and ISIS attacks against these these oppressed religious people. But um, in, in perspective, again, it feels like it really minimizes the weight of this story. Sorry, I had to close some blinds because the sun came streaming right through. So I think it was odd to me that in the perspective this character almost fetishizes this Yazidi woman. Um, he finds her very alluring and mysterious after everything that she's been through and all the secondhand information he's gotten about her. And that I didn't like on its own. But then at the same time, the book very exclusively takes a belittling tone through the character perspectives of her religion. Um, and it's clear that is a the the dominant stance that they kind of find it weird and um, silly at times um, some of the beliefs that she has. So I didn't like that. We never got the balance between what her actual belief was and what the the characters in perspective think that her belief is and and why they think it's silly. So uh, that on top of the other religious element being that most of our, our primary characters involved are Muslim and ISIS are also purporting to be Muslim. They sort of hand wave away the idea that, that Iceland, ISIS are just doing it wrong. They're doing their belief wrong. Meanwhile, ISIS are, are justifying and have basically these legalistic rules for how they have to do these horrible things in order for them to be okay that, that have been signed off by their caliphate. And so these, these characters are, are just kind of going, well, they're not real Muslims, right? But they never reckon with the fact that both the characters in perspective and the terrorists are purporting to follow the same religion. Um, so I wish we had explored that at all. <laughs> it's not talked about really, other than them hand waving it away. So that was that was a pretty big problem for me. Um, I think otherwise the writing didn't engage me at all. Uh, I think had we had one of the, the other characters that I mentioned as the perspective, we could have gotten some interiority of those characters and some emotional connection to them. But being distance in the perspective we're actually in, it felt very much like I was just reading words on the page. I was just like, okay, I'm continuing to read sentences one after another. 
I never connected with any part of this at all. So that was my my main flaw here was I think as a result of the, the perspective, I didn't gain a character or emotional connection to this story. Then in fourth place, I have The Art of Losing by Ellis Zenitor. <laughs> and I'm sure this worked much more well for other people, but it didn't work for me. Um, this is another one I would have DNF'd, absolutely. Um, I talk about that quite a bit in my much longer rambly review standalone for this book. Uh, this was a very good generational saga. I think let's focus on that good element first. Um, this follows three generations from first an Algerian um, generation who are there at the time of the clash between France kind of withdrawing and an independence movement within the country. And as a result, they end up um, becoming refugees to France. And so then we see the, the next generation who was born in Algeria, but has a childhood and, and grows up in France. And then a third generation who is actually born in France. And I think that progression is the powerful element here. Like it really does that very well in showing how there is um, a phase shift across the generations, the way they lose connection with culture and come to have new culture over the course of this. Um, the ways that their familial connections are hampered and limited because of it. Um, and then uh, as part of this, the, that third generation also does travel back to Algeria um, for a visit, basically, and kind of gains a new perspective and connection to the place. So <laughs> what I didn't like is that I felt like this had a, a singular lens on the political situation. It didn't even try to kind of explain more broadly what was going on politically. It's exclusively the character's perspective. And the character has a clear point of view on what's going on. And we only ever get that. Uh, so I felt like that was a pretty big miss because there were multiple points where we're getting like historical info dumps in the first part about exactly what was happening in Algeria with the French, but then we never really get a broader sense of a, kind of what's happening with the conflict. So I wish we had more of that. Um, I also really struggled with getting behind the characters. <laughs> These were very unlikable characters for the most part. Um, there were things implied to be culture or cultural decisions that were made that just turned me off and, and made me unable to connect with the characters in the ways that I would have absolutely DNF'd, as I said. So I think that was a pretty big problem. The third big negative is that there's no real sense of place. Um, you should absolutely be able to understand the sights and sounds of Paris when there's a character there, and it just is non-existent. There are moments, um, moments inside their house where it's really tangible, but they're so brief and barely there. So I just felt that was lacking. And finally, my biggest problem with this was the perspective. So again, like with the perspective choice here, I lacked a connection to the characters emotionally. I wish we had been inside their heads much more. Instead, we're in kind of an overview outside of all of the characters. Uh, it's sort of an omniscient narrator, I guess. But it's weird because we do at moments kind of jump forward <laughs> to the final character and the fact that she's going to be traveling back to Algeria throughout the story, but we're not really in her perspective as she's overseeing this. There's no possible way she could have learned most of the things about her father or grandfather that are the other two stories. And yeah, I just lacked an interiority of characterization that I really needed to emotionally connect with this story. So that's why that one was in fourth. In third place, I have The Phone Booth at the Edge of the World by Laura and I Messina. And this is, this one's translated from Italian, but it's based in Japan. So this one was kind of unusual. Um, and the, the author, uh, I believe, does live in Japan now. 
This one was interesting because I, I think it's very palatable. I think I could hand this to just about anybody and they would not have a bad time with it. Um, <laughs> this, however, was an awfully long book for how light on plot it is. It's a very quiet, grief-based novel about people who lost their loved ones in a tsunami in Japan in 2011. And so they're making connections with one another, these grieving people, over their journeys, their pilgrimages to this, the wind phone, which is a phone that's not connected to anything, um, that's located in a remote rural garden that was set up for them to go and talk to their loved ones that they lost. So that's like all there is to it. Um, there, there's not that much plot. It feels like it could have been a novella versus, you know, 400 pages. It needed to be about a third of the length. So that that's my big knock on it being so, so long. Um, I think there was a lack of emotional connection to the characters and it tried to make up for that by, by pulling at your heartstrings with platitudes. So the writing is extremely sentimental and like overly saccharine sweet through the whole thing. Literally every page there's there's some kind of platitude. So I yeah I feel like this would be a good book club book. <laughs> That's what it seems like to me where you're going to get um, a really heavy-handed strong emotional message and there's a lot of processing of grief. There's a lot to talk about in terms of themes and it's very accessible to just about any reader. So yeah I, I think that's not necessarily a fault, but that's not something I'm looking for in a book. So it was not my favorite. Very unexpectedly in second place, this was a surprise to me as well, is How to Order the Universe by Maria Jose Ferrada. This one has been the little engine that could, I think, of this prize. Nobody was expecting this and has been surprised by it, I think, over the course of this. And I think this just knows exactly what it is and doesn't try to do more than that. And and that's why it has been so successful. This is a really lovely, tiny story from the perspective of a young girl who is traveling with her with her traveling salesman father and playing hooky from school. And um, she she has this great dynamic and relationship with her father. So this is the first book on my list here that actually has real interiority to the character and a real connection emotionally and relationally with other characters. So I loved that aspect of this. She's a really quirky character as well. Like she she doesn't really fit in with other kids. We don't really see her interact with other kids a whole lot, but she gets along well with these, these traveling salesmen. She's sitting in diners with them. And um, you know, so she's she's a very unusual character. And seeing her her drive and her understanding of the situation, her lack of connection with her mother or difficulties with her mother is a really interesting element that then plays into the fact that we have this relational drama immediately with her parents, her family, but then we also have a bigger drama with society. And I don't want to get into exactly what's going on there, but I think this is so well done because it's from the child perspective of those two elements. We're seeing it through very innocent eyes, um, very naive eyes. So she doesn't fully understand what's going on and we only get a glimpse of each of these things of her her immediate relationships with her family and kind of their dynamics between each other and conflicts between each other and the the larger social conflicts that are happening in the, the world at the time so i think this did such a good job of portraying that and the fact that the perspective was actually a good choice in this one so yeah i just i really really liked this one and finally, as I'm losing all my light, I will try to get this in before we're completely in the dark. Uh, my winner is The Anomaly by Herve Letelier. This one is translated from French, but interestingly takes place mostly in America. Um, it's following a flight from Air France that has landed in the US. And in the course of that, there has been this massive anomaly. Um, so at the start of the book, I, I'm not going to talk about uh, the plot very much or what the anomaly is. It's all spoilers. I'll talk about that in the individual book review. Um, but the, the start of the book is following one character at a time. So it's almost like short stories that you're being introduced to a character and then moving along to the next character, getting a backstory. 
and then the anomaly happens and it's a sci-fi element so this is very much a speculative book and then the majority of the book is processing it's how do we deal with this at a personal and relational level um this weird thing that has happened how do we deal with it from a moral religious and philosophical standpoint and those are just really interesting discussions to have um the one the one falter on this one is again perspective i wish we had gotten some interior of the characters we don't really get their emotional processing internally um so we, we we're very much seeing this happen from outside of the characters i love the science elements though and the the religious and philosophical discussions i think those were smartly done um one of the reasons this is a surprise for me to be on the top is that for me being a largely sci-fi and fantasy reader this feels very much like things i've seen done a lot elsewhere um it didn't feel that fresh to me um so it felt like a, a well-executed book and a good expression of those things but it, a word worthy i'm not sure i i don't feel like it was tackling new concepts that i haven't seen in sci-fi before is is really where i'm going with this but this is again another book on this list that i feel like i could put in the hands of just about anybody and they would have a great time reading it this has a good balance of plot and a diverse range of characters it's tackling a lot of themes and messaging and i thought it did that very well so i think it's firing on the most cylinders of all these books that i had so that's why it's it's my winner um i think this was my book that i mentioned would be in my top five of all of my books so this would be at my bottom of my top five um if i were to pick a top five out of all of the books that i have read i would say this this would be in fifth place and then um after that would be there's no such thing as an easy job in fourth place in third place would be my heart which i think was probably the most well written book that i've read of the entire prize however it's not actually a novel <laughs> um i think it, it was really really well done but it's it's a memoir then in second place I would have the republic of false truths and my winner would be more than i love my life clearly i have different tastes than most other people because some of those were eliminated in round one and didn't make it on um however i think if i had to predict who is actually going to win this prize out of the six finalists i would say it's going to be the art of losing i think i've heard the most broad praise of that book and I think it's a very well written book i think it accomplished a lot of great things there were just some some things that did not work for me massively and so so it wasn't a book for me but i can absolutely see why other people are loving it so i think art of losing is going to be the winner so that is it for me today my assessments let me know if you participated in the book two prize if you agree or disagree with my assessments and um we will see how this all shakes out thanks so much for watching